uh, we have today a, a subject for you that uh, that really has some complexity. I mean, on a on a uh, straightforward side, we are exceedingly pleased to receive from the eminent photographer Steve McCurry the photographs that uh, were made from the last, the very last roll of Kodachrome. And these will be photographs that will, will be presented in just a few minutes for our collection and also for, of course, for our display and subsequently for a, for a tour that we will put together uh, for, uh, for global enjoyment. But, you know, the Kodachrome story is a story that's filled with three quarters of a century of memories. It's three quarters of a century of of uh, documentation of global events. It's a story that is marked by three quarters of a century of excellence at Eastman Kodak Company. So it has a, a lot of substance. It's not simply the culmination of, uh, of that three quarters of a century marked by a handover of uh, 31 photographs. It's, uh, it is filled with emotion and, uh, and resonance. I should point out that in, in our archive is the, uh, the records of uh, Leopold Godowski, who with Leopold Manis uh, developed Kodachrome, so that their, their laboratory records, as well as their personal reflections, are here in this, in this great archive. Um, Steve McCurry, through the course of his, of his career, um, preeminent magnum photographer since the early 80s, uh, one of the leading photographers for National Geographic since the early 80s, um, his work through those decades, one image after another, a Kodachrome image, covers of magazines, National Geographic, of course, and other publications around the world. Um, so what a wonderful record, what a wonderful achievement, and we are delighted to be receiving that box of, of film. And here's Steve McCurry. Oh, it's great to be here at the George Eastman House. It's uh, uh, the premier photographic institution, uh, in my view, in the, in the country, and certainly one of the leading photographic institutions in the world. Um, our great director, Tony Bannon, has been a um, great friend and uh, has done an amazing job at, at the George Eastman House. Um, I uh, had uh, th this whole Kodachrome, last roll of Kodachrome project came about uh, while I was uh, just having a casual conversation with Audrey Young Keir. Uh, I, I, you know, back, this was just prior to the announcement of the, uh, of the discontinuation of Kodachrome. And uh, it just occurred to me, uh, you know, while talking to Audrey, uh, you know, how great it would be to get the last roll uh, that came off the assembly line. Uh, anyway, Audrey went back and talked to the people at Kodak, and um, uh, to my delight, they, they agreed to, to embark on this project. I, I, was, uh, I used Kodachrome for uh, 25 or 30 years. I, I probably have 800,000 or more uh, Kodachrome slides in my archive. Um, it was uh, an incredible film, I, probably the best film ever made it, for a couple of reasons. Um, it, it had the, this sort of wonderful longevity and kind of archival quality that even if the slides weren't kept in a perfect condition, uh, I, they, they still retain their color and their vibrancy. I uh, had some rolls of film um, in, the, in my attic, uh, which had accidentally been stored away. And even from the 60s, when I went back um, last summer and found them, uh, they were still look great. And uh, all the heat and the cold and all the many years. Um, the other thing about Kodachrome was the incredible uh, color. The color palette was so wonderful, really reflected uh, what you saw uh, when you were out there traveling around the world. Uh, other films were often uh, garish and 
cartoonish and they would fade after some time. Um, but Kodachrome really kept uh, the true colors and um, uh, I, I just, uh, that's when I went out to shoot for National Geographic, uh, that was the only film I took. Um, and, and the, when I started thinking about, you know, what's, how can I, what am I going to shoot these last pictures with? Um, or what am I going to, what's the subject am I going to choose and what am I going to do? So I thought, um, I wanted to try and um, come up with iconic places and people. I, I thought, well, since I live in New York City, let me start with uh, photographing in New York and perhaps some architecture, some personalities. Um, I, I wanted this kind of theme of vanishing uh, cultures and vanishing ways of life. and, and, and uh, So then I went to India and there's a a tribe of um, nomadic shepherds who uh, their way of life is, is changing dramatically because of uh, uh, the modern world we live in and, and the roads and the uh, fences and uh, cities coming up so they're no longer able to take their flocks of animals uh, you know, and walk with them for months on end. Um, and they're having to become day laborers and, and, and this once dignified people, uh, very proud people are now um, having to do this sort of, you know, this uh, work on the, along the side of the road and whatnot. Um, there's a, so kind of started in New York, De Niro uh, was very keen, very interested in participating in this project. Um, because of time constraints, uh, we, we had him kind of represent uh, an iconic figure in New York. And then uh, I thought, what better piece of architecture than Grand Central Station to uh, include in the, in the project. Um, I, I did stop in Istanbul briefly on the way back and, and had dinner with a, probably the most famous Turkish photographer, Ara Gular, who is, is an icon in, uh, in Turkey. It's sort of the Henri Cartier person of, of Turkish uh, photographers. And, and, and having dinner with him, I thought this is a perfect uh, person to include in the last role. Uh, I kind of finished it up um, in New York doing what I, my favorite thing when I'm photographing, just walking around, um, doing kind of street photography, just seeing what catches my eye and all that. So I, that's sort of the way I kind of ended the role. Um, I ended up in Parsons, Kansas, which was the last lab in the entire world developing uh, Kodachrome. I mean, who would have ever imagined that that would be the last lab standing? And um, I found myself with three uh, frames, three pictures left. I had four hours left to uh, uh, before I had to turn the film in. And um, so I quickly made three uh, this is a, one of the three. I was four o'clock in the hotel room. I, I had, uh, you know, four hours to go before I had to turn the film in. The film crew that I was working with from National Geographic were, we were going to meet, we were going to get the film processed. And um, so and then at six o'clock in the morning, I was really desperate because I only had two hours left and I had this, you know, one of the most important roles of film in my life. And here I, I you know, I was dashing around without any sleep. And um, I've always uh, loved, uh, I, I, one of my themes that I like to follow is people sleeping around the world in all sorts of unlikely and unusual and kind of funny situations. So that, hence that picture of somebody sleeping on the street in Parsons, Kansas. And the last frame of the last roll, and again, I, I was down to my last sort of hour, and I just, uh, by coincidence, went by a cemetery, and I thought, you know, okay, the, the, you know, the death of Kodachrome, uh, and, and the cemetery, and uh, I thought, okay, this is, uh, I'm going to have to go with this. I looked all over the cemetery. I um, uh, decided that would be the way I would conclude the role. Um, it's not the death of film. I mean, film lives on. There's great films, uh, you know. Uh, but um, in the case of um, Kodachrome, we had to, uh, you know, it was sort of a sad, sad farewell. Um, you know, if you kind of look at it in a kind of a, in a certain sense that life is transitory and, and uh, 
things kind of, um, and uh, it, there's an impermanence to life. Uh, and uh, Kodachrome was great, wonderful. We'll always remember it with fond memories. But, um, uh, and, and I was very honored to be part of this uh, project. Uh, and happy with Audrey to make it possible. There's no better place uh, in the world to uh, store this, th these pictures uh, than the George Eastman House. I've, I've actually uh, printed uh, all of the uh, pictures from the last roll, and uh, they're here in this box, and I wanted to present them to uh, Tony Bannon, the director of the George Eastman House, where these pictures will live and reside hopefully forever. Best uh, place, uh, I can't think of a better institution to, to, to give them to, and um, um, I'm honored to be a part of this. Thank you very much, Tony. Thank you.